How's it going crew? This is Happy Days and welcome to another Terraria tutorial. Today we're at the beach and we're going to be doing a brick by brick build of a version of my high yield 25 plus platinum an hour money farm. This has been highly requested and a lot of you are just like, I'd just like to see you building it brick by brick. So I'm more than happy to do that. So basically this tutorial Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> this tutorial is going to go over just some basics like what sort of materials you'll need, uh, how you can set it up, and just some general things that you need to have in the farm, and then the rest of the design's pretty much up to you. So, to get started, what you'll need. What I've got in my inventory here is 100 lizard bricks, which is actually more than enough, you only need 80. And that's for the purpose of spawning the arapaimas, which are the fast-moving fishes. fish that are in hard mode. We've also got 200 purple ice blocks, 200 red ice blocks for crimson and blah, 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 corruption respectively. We've got a lucky coin to get lots of cash to drop and we've got a broken slime staff and that's so our little baby slimes don't do too much damage. So the first thing you want to do is just what I was doing then is start pathing your way out over the ocean and you kind of want to just be about halfway out so that's why I haven't counted, I've just sort of flown a little bit of the way, checking back at shore, and that, that's feeling pretty good, I might knock a few off actually. Cool. Alright, so, actually no, I'm going to put a few back. Alright, the first thing you want to do when you're making this is actually start with your lizard bricks, and you're just making a bit of a platform, and that, this is what we're going to build the farm off of. And I'm going to kill that slime, and the penguin, sorry penguin. Really didn't mean that. Okay, and we're going to dig this away a bit for now. So the point of using the lizard bricks, as I said, is spawning the arapaimas, but it also has the benefit of increasing the spawn rate dramatically in this farm. Um, I'm pretty sure I've heard it can increase mob spawning by about 50%, which is fantastic. Okay, another thing we want is you'll see I'm building just into the water line here. And the point of that, and I'm going to show you how to do this on PC and console because I've been chatting to you guys a bit in the forums and, and in the comments section. And yeah, we sort of realized that the farm can operate a bit differently on both versions. So all we're doing to get started guys, just using these bricks to make the base. And really it's up to you how you want to do it. I just use the lizard bricks for the base because... I'm thinking, well, why not? You know, you got to use it for some part of the farm, so you may as well use it for this. So we've just done that. Now, the one key part, and this is a bit of a critical point of making this, you need this platform here to be just above the water, and you need both sides to sort of dip in a bit of a, I don't know, I guess it's kind of like a semicircle in pixelated form, just dipping under the water, and I'll explain why right now. Now on PC, what you're looking to do with these is actually uh, use a hammer to slant the blocks. And what that does is when the mobs uh, move into it, they'll actually glide along it rather than getting caught on the jagged edges. It also works for flying mobs too. Flying mobs will get caught on this sloped edge and slide right on underneath, which is beautiful. Okay, going to put some uh, nice doors here in a moment, so let's just build up a little bit, make a bit of an entryway, and, you know, because it's very important, you know, you want to have access to your amazing, amazing little AFK farm here, so why not? Let's just uh, put the door on this side too. So, you might be wondering why I'm using the coloured ice blocks instead of just normal ice. So for, for the purposes of making the different biomes for the key molds, um, what we need is to have 300 ice blocks present to, for it to count as a snow biome. So I'm using 400 because you need 200 red or crimson blocks and 200 corruption for it to count as those. So we're kind of trying to do a, you know two birds with one stone here. All right, does that look even? Someone asked me to wear the tool belt in these tutorials and I forgot to buy one. It looks pretty even to me. 
Okay. The next thing we want to do is start getting the ice blocks down. So using the colored ones, I'm just going to start placing those. And really guys, the design is completely up to you. I just sort of go with a bit of a square pattern. You know, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter as long as it's on screen mostly. So, and I find it's easier to keep it together. And the real big reason for that, and just to give you something to think about now, if you want to use the Clem Taminator to change them later on, you can easily do that. Say you wanted to change to farming uh, Hallow later, you can easily change those ice blocks into a pink ice, and that'll allow uh, Hello key molds to drop too. So, yeah, it's just something to think about while you're making it. All right, so I'm just going to speed this little part up while I'm placing ice blocks because I know it's exciting. I understand these things, and you know, this is a uh, very very cool stuff, but uh, I'll just speed this up and I'll come back once I've placed all the snow ice. Alright, see you soon. Okay, so we've got all the ice blocks placed, so that should have enabled both the snow, crimson and corruption biomes. The next thing we're going to do is put in the little technique that's going to attract all the mobs to us. And basically you just need to build a little too high wall, just wide enough to, for your character to sit in the middle, and put two buckets of water in it, and then jump inside. And what that should do is aggro all the mobs in the ocean. And you can see that the Arapaimas were actually sliding along underneath to the little kill zone down here. So this is where we're going to be building some platforms up and summoning all the slimes on. So I'm just going to use some ravens to kill them all off quickly. So we can see that it's working for now. And when you jump out, the mobs are de -aggro. The reason for this is when you're in water, the game immediately makes any fish AI mobs attack you and it can't tell that you're actually in a different pool of water and that's why all the mobs aggro onto you on screen. So it's a really effective way of getting all the mobs to attack you. Alright, so what we're actually going to do is jump in the water now and start setting up the platforms that we need. So let's put those into our inventory and get started. So. Basically, we want an area where the <laughs> where the fish can kill us, uh, where the slimes can sort of all live peacefully on this little platform, but more importantly, where the loot can also, you know, be saved from falling down too low. So I think maybe just one higher than that. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. There we go. Beautiful. So you want about two blocks width, and then we'll be summoning... Uh, where can I... yeah, put some stuff there. So we'll actually be summoning the little slimes up here, and they'll be bouncing around on the platform. And that's pretty good. So let's leave the other platform there anyway. And... Yeah, let's put a third one. And I'm almost dead, which is not good. It's uh, rather inconvenient. So we'll put a few here for good luck. And let's get out before we get killed by the mobs. Okay, that's looking pretty nice. So now we can have a quick chance to have give it a proper test. So let's desummon our ravens and our slime. Jump in the water. And what we're looking for, whoops, is that the slimes are bouncing away up the top here and doing lots of little one damage hits. Now obviously no coins are dropping yet because we need to equip our lucky coin. And now you can see actually money starting to drop onto us which is fantastic. And that's pretty good. That's working alright. We like that. So let's de-summon 
the slimes and kill off the mobs. Get out of there. And a lot of... I recommend to a lot of you in the comments that you actually take a moment to test your trap before you do too much uh, designing and making it all nice and looking good. Now, if you're playing on console, console or mobile and you're having trouble or it's just not letting you use the hammer to slant the blocks these ways, a good way to get around that is actually by um, building the platform a lot wider. And what you'll do, and I'm just getting some ravens to keep me safe while I'm doing this. What you can actually do is, rather than trying to catch them by guiding them in, just build the platform so wide that they can't not get caught on it. And I'll show you what I mean. So just building wide here, but not so wide that mobs are spawning on it. Okay guys, so this is the time when you might like to, you know, add a few little things to make the base nice and cool for you. So I usually like to add a safe and a piggy bank in so I can access all my stuff while I'm using the farm. I also like to put in a water candle which boosts the mob spawn rate that little bit more. And then you can do things also like, you know, if you're playing a multiplayer world with your friends and you want it to look cool, you can add a little background wall in which... Uh, you know, if you're making a, a cool world, then why not take an extra t moment to, you know, add a bit of design to it. It also lets you do things like uh, put paintings on the wall and torches on the wall, which just makes it a little bit cooler in my opinion. And if you've gone to all the effort of making the farm, why not, I say. But remember, as I've said, it's this is one of the last things you should do because you want to make sure like when I tested it before, that it's actually working how you want before you go doing all the pretty stuff. You know what I'm saying? So there we go. And I grabbed a few paintings. Let's see, what did I get? I got the Powered by Birds one. That's kind of fun. And I got the Ominous Presence. Where can we put that? Let's put it up here. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Let's put a torch on the side. Oh, check that out. Let's do the same thing with the bird statue, the bird painting. There we go. Actually, it's, it's in the wrong spot. And this is important, guys. You've got to hang your pictures in the right spot. You know how it goes. No, it's still not right. Hang on. Oh, now. Oh, there we go. That is fantastic. So, so we've got all this. Life's pretty good. We've got a blood jelly banner. Let's put that there. But maybe you want to farm something else while you're doing this too. You think, yeah, okay, happy, this is all right, you know. Get a few slimies, get some gold, get some platinum. Okay, so it's good. It's working okay. We've got our paintings, got lots of, uh, lots of coins coming our way. You can see all the money happening. Seven gold, that's awesome. So maybe you want to add some more mobs while we're doing this. And I completely understand, you know, you want this farm doing as many different things as it can. So what we're going to do is actually add a desert line along here which will spawn some dark mummies or light mummies depending what sand you use while we're doing this. Although you probably need to use dark uh, or crim sand or even sand to go with the corruption. So we're going to kill off all these mobs and uh, yeah, let's have a look at how you can do that. Alright. Alrighty, so... If you still want to add a little bit more to this farm, you can quite easily. What you need to start with is just a row of some sort of normal brick. And yes, I could have left the ice there from before. Um, basically, if you're using, you probably want to try and avoid for the base block using um, uh, anything that's like like even even stone or even bricks. I probably actually should have used grey bricks for this because this normal grey stone is actually going to get corrupted or changed to crimson, but, you know, it's all good. And then we're going to add some even sand to it. And what that's actually going to do, and I'm actually not going to put it that close to the sand because that will... That will change this whole desert area into even, and we don't want that. I know I can just use the contaminator, but I'd rather not. So we're putting some sand along here. And the point of that is, while we're standing in the trap, 
this will actually have a chance to spawn things like dark mummies. And uh, it will spawn the occasional uh, flying crimson mob. But what you'll notice is they should get caught on this underneath bit. So, the mobs will walk along here and then they're going to fall in the water. So, oh, here comes a mummy now. Thank you. And here's one I prepared earlier. So, what we actually want him to do is fall onto a platform and then he'll walk along and jump up to here. So, ravens, can you a little bit of help? Thanks, guys. That's awesome. So, what we're going to do, hopefully without dying, is just lower the platform enough. That's perfect. And we're just going to extend it to where a mob can fall off there and walk along this a bit. So we'll do this to about here. And I think I'm about to start drowning. There we go. And they'll get caught up, and they're doing it right now, into this area. Oh, that is so perfect. I couldn't have planned that better if I tried. Okay, so let's try this again. Let's put our slimes back in there. And what we're looking for is the occasional mobs to walk along this desert part now too. Now, just something that I've learned, um, well, the first time I tried to do this, I put so many rows. I put rows of blocks everywhere. And what I found is it started to override the ocean mobs. Because remember, most, most of your mobs you want to be these jungle ones. But as you can see, this dark mummy is walking underneath. Then he's going to jump up the platforms and join in the fun here, which is fantastic. And the slime is stun locking him a bit, so I might need to lower that platform a little just to give them a chance to get in properly. So, let's actually fix that up now. Are they getting in? Oh no, they're actually coming in. That's cool. Yeah, here they come. Oh, maybe I was standing a bit too far to the right. So now we've actually added it so dark mummies can come into this trap too. And all that good stuff. So let's uh, kill those guys off with the ravens. And back out. So now we've got the chances of ground mobs coming along here. And also normal mobs. Alrighty. Okay guys. The last thing you can do is if you want to change this farm from a crimson corruption to drop hello molds as well. All I've done is equip the Clentaminator with uh, the blue solution. And then basically all we're doing is spraying the ice blocks so they change into the pink ice blocks. And that means that now it's counted as a halo biome. And yeah, like uh, it can drop halo, snow and temp lizard, blah, 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 try again, jungle key molds. Um, one thing to know is halo can't mix with crimson and corruption. So yeah, you either need to have halo or Corruption and Crimson, but you can't have uh, all three at the same time. So, then I can just change that one back to Crimson. Change this one back to... Did I just call that Crimson? I meant Corruption. And this one back to Crimson. And you can see it just got darker. And that's because the Crimson Corruption biomes are darker. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Okay guys, thanks for spending time with me today, and we're ready for some shout outs now. I've got Suspicious Windmills, Is we've got a bit of a Warner Brothers theme going at the moment. He's asked me to say, meep meep, and I think you know which one that is. I hope so. It was kind of okay. Uh, Mikhail Markowski has asked me to say, Zanzistigent, which is uh, Gregor's Zanzistigent. Which is that YouTube clip where they don't know what his name is and it's kind of funny. Alright, Sugar Souls Gaming asked me to sing a bit of the Llama song and I'm just going to say it though. So, I don't know if you've heard it, but it goes, Here's a llama, there's a llama, and a little, another little llama. La <laughs> I'll start again. Here's a llama, there's a llama, and another little llama. Fuzzy llama, funny llama, 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 duck. So, just check it out on YouTube if you haven't seen it. It's kind of, it's funny. I like it. <laughs> uh, Taz74 has asked me to say Toy Boat really fast lots of times. And apparently it's hard to do. So, <gasps> why don't you try it if you're watching as well? Okay. So, you go, Toy Boat, 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 Toy Boat. <laughs> you can't do it. It's impossible. I am saying that now. This is impossible. And Gaming with Dan has said, with great hours comes great gaming time. 
Alrighty guys, uh, leave a like if you enjoyed this brick by brick tutorial. And if you want to see more of them, let me know what you want to see next. And yes, I know you want to see the frost moon. I'm working on it. It's a bit tricky and I will have it finished soon. Just a quick one guys, if you leave me questions in the comments, can you please tell me what version of Terraria you were playing on? So PC, mobile, or console. And give me as much information as possible because I, it is getting harder to answer all the comments and it's getting to the stage where if I have to ask you too many questions, you know, it might get to the stage where, you know, you mightn't get as much information from me. So tell me as much as you can and help me out. And also everyone else, if you can help them out too, if you see someone ask a question, help them out. It's awesome. And you get cookies. I mean, how awesome is that? Alright guys, until next time, stay happy, and this is Happy Day signing out. See ya!